Teachers' pension funds are at risk as the largest pension fund in the United States chose to increase risk to try to reach a certain investment return. Is that what you need to be doing to reach your retirement goals? I'll explain. Coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, the California Public Employees Retirement System, also known as CalPERS, met last week. It's the largest pension fund in the U.S., by the way. It has almost a half a trillion dollars in it, which is, uh, you know, massive, okay, and serves some two million members. So, I mean, the decisions that they make obviously impact a lot of dollars, a lot of people, but it also could be setting some precedents. Maybe you and I need to glean into what they're doing. Well, they met in November and they made a decision to increase the risk that they're taking in order to meet their stated investment return objective. Wow. Okay, that, that is a massive development. Let's dig into it. So at the beginning of 2021, their 20-year investment target, target return was 7%. They had to update that and it came back at 6.8%. They said, okay, we're not happy, but all right. Well, then they just updated again and it came back at 6.2% was their expected 20-year return. Far short of that original 7% objective and definitely short as well from that, from that updated 6.8% objective. So what'd they do? What'd they do? They looked and they, they could have voted and said, well, we'll just accept these lower rates of return. You know, interest rates are historically low and will likely stay there for a long time. Bonds won't yield as much. Okay, we'll have to adjust somewhere else. Or, hey, uh, in, uh, investment multiples, stock market multiples are at an all-time high or near all-time highs. And therefore, future expected returns for equities might be lower than, than normal. And so, you know, we'll just have to accept it. They, they didn't. They chose not to accept and keep those lower rates of return. They said, what can we do to achieve a higher rate of return? So they did, they did two things. One, they chose to go on margin. They chose to borrow money. They chose, they voted, they agreed to borrow $25 billion, nearly 5% of the fund, borrow that money and invest it. Not borrow it to pay off debt or whatever, or, or help with managing costs, no, no, no. Borrow to invest and hopefully earn a greater return on that 25 billion and then pay that 25 billion back risky move. Lots of retail investors are doing that too. The amount of, of, of margin uh, in the stock market right now or in, in investors' accounts is at an all-time high. It's been soaring this year as well. So many retail investors are doing the same thing. The largest pension fund in the U.S. chose to do that. Should that worry us? It worries me. Um, and then on top of that, they also decided to increase the amount of exposure they have to alternative investments or riskier investments, things like private, private equity or other alternative investments. So what do you think? I, to me, it makes me nervous. I saw this headline a couple times and I was like, you know what, I gotta talk about this and I gotta look into it further. To me, it makes me nervous. You've got two million people relying on the, the stewards of this fund that they're going to make a wise choice. And when it comes to pensions, people just assume, well, I, I, I work this many years and I go through this multiple and this is the check that I'm gonna get every month for the rest of my life. And when that, and I don't wanna use this term because investing is not gambling, but as you increase the risk and speculation, it does turn in a little bit to gambling, I guess, in a, in a way, or at least it starts nudging you that way. And I mean, gambling, 2 million people's retirement on, on borrowing money to invest in some other thing, it makes me, makes me a little nervous. Does this says, set a precedence for you though? Just average Joe, me and you, maybe we're not, we, we, we've never worked in the California public system and so we don't have this pension, but is this, is it, are these the types of things that you and I need to do to make sure our retirement is on track? No. No, it's not. The number one thing that you need to do is a five-factor retirement plan. I've talked about it plenty of times on the Wise Money Show and on this channel. You need a five-factor retirement plan to see where you stand 
in relation to where you want to be with retirement, okay? What age do you wanna be done? How much do you wanna spend? What income sources will you have? How much, how much dollars do you already have saved up and how much are you saving? And then how much risk are you comfortable taking with your investments, okay? You've gotta do that five-factor retirement plan right now, regardless of your age, because you've gotta see, are you on track or are you falling short? If you're falling short, you then work with your CFP to determine what trade-offs you need to make. The CalPERS decided what trade-off they were willing to make, and I don't know if all two million members would have made the same choice. They said, we're gonna increase risk. We're gonna increase risk. That's one of your trade-offs. In 20 years of doing financial planning for folks, that's often the least uh, the, you know, the, the, the one that people choose uh, the, the, the least frequent uh, uh, time. I mean, most of the time, people adjust one of their other assumptions. Okay, well, I will, um, if, I'm, if I'm falling a little bit short, can I save a little bit more money? What if I save an extra 500 a, a month? What if I save an extra five grand a year? Something like that. What if when my mortgage is paid off, all that money that was going towards the mortgage, I save for retirement? What if when the kids are out of the house and I'm an empty nester, I can save more? Blah, 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 right? So, so one of the adjustments you can make is I can save more. The other is I can work longer, okay? And, and so if you're falling short, that's the other one. Well, even just working one more year makes an enormous difference in the confidence and sustainability of your retirement plan. So can I save more, work longer? Should I take more risk? What are some of the other, other trade-offs that you can make? You've got to work with your CFP on that if you're falling short of your goals. Don't just default to assume, well, I've got to borrow money to invest and I've got to invest in some speculative investments. So that's what I would tell you to do in your situation. This shouldn't set a precedence for you. Now, what if you have worked in the California public system and do have a pension, either through CalPERS or what if, what if you've got a pension somewhere else? Is this all of a sudden mean, well, you know, this wise money guy said they might sort of be gambling with these dollars, I can't trust it. No, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. I would still plan on these dollars being there in the stated amount that they said but I wouldn't have that be your only plan for retirement. I would also be saving up, fully expecting that those pension funds will be there in the amount that they said, but be saving up on your own as well so you have a safety net or you have some options if you need to adapt. Your pension, okay, especially through a public, a, a public uh, retirement system, is guaranteed by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, the PBGC. However, it's not guaranteed dollar for dollar. In fact, the last time we saw a wave of pensions go to the B PBGC is they got about a 50% payout. Could your retirement withstand a 50% cut in your pension? Well, if you don't have any other dollars saved up or other, other income sources, maybe not. So I would tell you, be saving up prudently, fully expecting that these pension funds will be there, but also making sure you've got some options just in case they're not there or the amount change. Or I, I, you know, the, what CalPERS could have done is they could have changed some of the requirements, delayed when people got a full retirement or, or changed some of the vesting, something like that to shore up the plan instead of just taking more risk. So what if the more risk doesn't pan out and they've got to make some other changes? Will that impact your pension? Make Make sure you're doing planning, make sure you're saving up, make sure you've got some other options just in case it happens because it's not in your control, all right? All of that, all of how this applies to you is working through your certified financial planner on comprehensive financial planning. So work with them on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can always contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com, that's corhorn with a K. Wise Money Show, you can find us there as well, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.